Welcome to Broker to Broker Podcast, brought to you by AIM, Association of Independent Mortgage Experts. I'm your host, JP Hussey of the Hussey Team Mortgage Advisors. And today I got my buddy, Dan Lorenko. I'm not going to try and say it the, what, the Portuguese way you said, Dan? Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, of Mortgage Navigators, right? Yep, I'm in Mile High City. Are you, are you the owner, though? No. Nope. Okay, so you're, you're one of the top LOs for them. Okay. Yeah, we got a little team, like 10 people, and uh, everybody kind of does their own thing. Yeah, and to give everyone a background, Dan and I met in, uh, in Vegas at Fuse last year. We were on the, the panel uh, with Lauren over at AFR, and that was a good time, right, man? I the thought it was fun. Game. Hillbilly JP brought it, man. You yeah. You the shining star. Oh, no, no, no way, man. But that was fun, man. That was, we were, I think we were both a little nervous, but we stepped up to the plate, right? You just got to take an edge off in Vegas. That's easy to do. Yeah, right, right. But that, that was a good time. But um, anyway, man, thank you for, for coming on. I uh, definitely want to get to learn more about you. Uh, I know a little bit about you, but clean slate. I want to know more about you. Let everyone know um, what you're doing in the industry. And hopefully this can really help everyone else out. So. Thanks again for coming on. Yeah, yeah. You forgot to mention, you know, it's kind of crazy. Four months ago, we were chilling out with the lizards. Yes. The monkeys. Yes. It's, still, it's such a short time ago and, and hyping Super Bowl commercials, you know? It, it, it feels like that was like a long time ago, but it wasn't that long ago. The rat race of life has slowed down a little bit. It's yeah. Really nice. it certainly has, man. Yeah, that was a good time, man. That was awesome. Um, all right, so let's dive in. We got about 45 minutes. It's going to fly by. Let's try and get some good content out of you. Um, let us know your background. And I'd like to specifically, specifically like to stay in that, that mortgage side. So I'd like to know how you got into the business and then take us up until now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the quick version is I went to school at Boulder, uh, go buffs, you know, and I nice. uh, got out, got a history degree didn't know where to go. And a temp agency threw me in with a mortgage company and said, Hey man, check out post-closing. Um, I don't know. I took some tests and they said I was mortgage mind focused or something. I was probably who paid the most, but whatever. They gave me <laughs> right. And then, um, uh, so it was a builder model, consumer direct. So what's in, I, I think what's interesting about my background is I've done all four. I started in consumer direct doing builder business. And then I went on to uh, the bank model, worked for one of the big five for a few years. And then I did retail and then now wholesale for a few years now, which is gotcha. kind of cool to try all four models. Yeah. So how long have you been in the industry? 17 years. I got out in 2003 and um, no breaks, no bad years, knock on wood. I've just been really lucky that I just put my head down and work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's what I've gotten out of you. Um, you're a grinder. Um, you kind of, you're, you're producing, you're, 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 you're doing some very good volume and you put your head down and, and I know we'll get into it later, but you're really big on, on life balance, uh, life work balance. Um, and you always do better at that. Come on. Always. I mean, we can always do that. A lot of people talk about it, this or that, but I mean, if you're in this industry, you have to be a little bit of a lunatic to be in it. Um, and that's obviously what all of us do, especially if you have a few kids, this or that, you know, the deal. Yeah. Um, all right. So, so you started at, uh, uh, more of that builder model, like you said, consumer direct. So you were like in-house. Oh yeah. You got, the, you got the incentive to use me, you know, and, um, you just pounded the headset and sat in a cubicle and, and had paper files in the good old days, you know, mm -hmm. um, and actually, you know, you know, in a weird way, every model has has value to it, right? Every model just has a different approach and works for different people. It's a really in good a weird way. I think the builder has a good premise to, you know, most loan officers are probably pretty lazy. They don't want to work on a loan three times over and stay in touch with someone for nine months. So the builder came out with a good model. Now, where the builder got real stupid is they shouldn't have gotten so greedy and charged the rates out for this incentive scam and and that's where the model is really you know, horrible. Yeah, I mean, not not to get off uh, target here, but it, back in 2000, you said uh, three, right? When you started, 
and even up until today, are you seeing the same type of incentives that builders give? I mean, you see it all the time on the message board. Like, I'm getting killed by this builder. You know, they're they're giving uh, this huge seller's assist with this or that. I mean, that's still, it's been like that for a long time, right? And they want to control the business, which is fair, but just don't rip off customers, man. And we don't need yeah. regulation. The builders just need to do the right thing. You know, they're yeah. already making 20, 30% on the house. Just give them a market mortgage. You don't have to, you don't have to make more money yeah yeah and it, and it's funny because it's it's legal they're, it's it's legal what they do right because they're a considered the seller right, right. i think that's how it works so it's there it's legally allowed to give this and that and take profit here whatever it is but you may not like it but it is legal right? right but fha loans with taxpayer money with conflict of interest i mean it's a little shady yeah yeah no doubt all right jumped off target to get a, a bit there but Wanted to bring that up because it's it's a big question. We see it all the time with with LOs complaining about getting beat by a builder. So um, talk about that later at some point. If you got questions on that, hit up Dan. Maybe he can help you out on how to beat that builder, give you some some technique there. Um, all right, cool. So started there, went to one of the big banks, which I'm sure helped you evolve as a loan officer. I started with Wells Fargo, right? Really helped me out to learn how to process my own loans because that's what you had to do. You had to yeah. learn the business. So you yeah, did you don't that. Have the support. You don't have the back office support. I was actually on the stagecoach too. I was yeah. there um, doing, you know, and it's also a good place. You know, when you're newer in the business, it's a good place to get some leads, understand how to get through, get some, some much smaller splits because there's a lot of layers of managers on top of managers in there. And you build relationships. And if you're in there and you, and you do it the right way, the people – stay more loyal to you than the bank. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's what it's about. I mean, it's about, again, growing your personal brand, right? And kind of separating you from that, that company, especially when you're in a large, large company like that. That's what yeah. it's all about. No doubt. Uh, yeah. And I'll bring this up quick. When I was there again, like I was saying, I was processing my own loans, right? <laughs> Cause I didn't know the processor was supposed to go get some of these conditions. We weren't taught the right way. But I was taught if you're gonna, if you want this deal to close, you always have to be involved. And still to this day, you have to be. Now you start adding people in there to help you out the right way. But man, my processor back then was just uploading the things that I, I gave right, right. him or her. That's all you, one. You had to drag that loan across the finish line to get it done. Yeah. There was, there was, it was a gatekeeper mentality for sure. Yeah, no doubt. All right, cool. So you were there, you're on the stagecoach, then you went. I'm assuming like a, like a correspondent type lender after yep. that caliber. Okay. Caliber. So a bigger type lender, not this. Yeah, and when I first got to caliber, I thought it was really good. There was a good, there was a good leader there and uh, he was big on saying, Hey, nobody's a number. You guys are all people. And it had a really good, good vibe. Um, I feel like that kind of watered down as leadership changed. And so I kind of felt like I needed to outgrow it and do a life challenge. Every one of these moves has made me feel not just financially improved, but personally improved too. Like you can't get stagnant and do the same thing too long. You have to press yourself to get out of your comfort zone and take risk, you know? Mm -hmm. And a lot of these companies, you know, you, it's a free roll. You can go right back. If you don't like it, they will come back and they will hold you up on the team meeting and say, tell them why, you know, broker isn't good or tell them why, you know, you should be back at the bank. Ironically though, no one ever goes backwards because <laughs> these channels are ended up being better and better. Yeah. I mean, it's funny how I remember every time I left a company, every time never was bad blood when I left and all the managers were, were good. And they would always say, if you don't like it, you can always come back because mm -hmm. that, I mean, no fault to them. That's their model. Let's put asses in seats right? <laughs> Try and get some loans in. Let's take this, keep taking pieces off the top. Right. And I think as you grow in this industry, depending on your personality, and if you want to grow, you realize it's all leading towards this smaller individualized uh, channel, which in my opinion at this point is the broker channel, right? Mm -hmm. Where you can really be who you want to be. Right. Um, so tell us a little bit about that. You left uh, caliber and mm -hmm. then uh, what year was that? And did you go right to, uh, to, to where you're at now? Or did you go yeah, somewhere else? I've, I've barely taken any breaks. I should take time off in between. But uh, no, it was 2000, 
18, I think now. Okay. Um, so I've been over here two years now. And uh, yeah, just left, you know, wanted a new challenge, uh, wanted kind of, you know, I'm, I'm pricing like I got an ego, but see what's coming. I mean, you can see that at retail, not just in mortgage, but other industries is getting um, bloated and inflated and technology is creating more efficient process, you know, they're creating better ways. And so in current market conditions, not to sound cliche, but, you know, brokers are better. This is the best place to be for the consumer and the originator too, man. Like yeah. when you submit a loan, I've, I've very rarely been in a place where I feel like the customer, you know, I feel like the, 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 the Chick-fil-A with, with the McDonald's pricing, you know, I feel like when an underwriter calls you up and says, Hey, thanks for your business. Let's collaborate on this together. You're kind of blown away. Like, is this, is this for real? And then years and years of doing it, you're like, these guys are efficient. You know, this is, this is technology infusing in to make our whole model better. Yeah, it's it's that's a really good point because we deal with the the loan originator deals so much with the client, right? And we're just human beings as well. And if our mind isn't confident in where we're placing the consumer, then we can't be we can't advise the consumer the correct way. That's what I always say. So you make a great point there where everyone's on the same team here. The lender, the LO, the client, and you all have to be on the same team to get the best product to the consumer. So when when that's a great point. Great spot. The broker channel is great for the consumer, but also the LO. Because it the really the customer goes can feel the oozing out of you if you're hesitant of knowing it will get done or not. They can oh, yeah. feel it and they know the tension. And then when you place a loan with whatever investor that you feel is going to be best targeted for that spot, they're trying to earn your business. You know, they know that you can use other entities. And so they have to earn your business. Whereas, you know, sometimes you get caught up, I'm not bashing any other channels, but sometimes yeah. there's a lot of politics. There's a lot of, um, you know, this person's got to be friends with this manager and there's all these things that get off the tracks. And um, for me and my personality, I kind of haven't fit in really well with corporate America. I've never been like management yeah. or anything like that. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a free spirited guy. And so I've, this is probably the, the happiest I've been in mortgage after all these years. And, it, and it's the easiest to get loans done. It's not harder to get a brokered loan done. I actually feel the opposite. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Um, yeah, so when, when you decided 2018, you started seeing the writing on the wall, right? You said maybe you need a little bit of a change. Nothing, nothing wrong with caliber. It just wasn't fitting what you wanted to do personally, right? What else was there that was showing you you know, this is probably the channel we have to be in for the consumer. Is there any specific points that you saw? Yeah, pricing, but anything that jumps to mind? You know, I have a, a, a good few mentors in the business and um, I'm an old soul. So they're kind of, they're older as well. And these are people that own their own broker shops for many years. And I worked with them from company to company. And I got, you know, one gal, Lisa, she's my mortgage mama, you know, and her and I talk and brainstorm a lot. And we were kind of seeing what was going on, you know. There's a lot of like manipulation with the rate sheet, and there was a lot of things that just didn't feel right, you know. And mm -hmm. so it's it's better to be in control and know that it's not the wild west, but it is a little bit of a deregulated environment, you know, with the current administration. So because of that, that has created wins for the consumer, you know, which has driven down pro price. And maybe maybe make compliance and back office not to have three guys of red tape for every loan officer. It's kind of yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Th that's a good point you made. Um, compliance can suck <laughs> a lot of times, but it's probably good, especially in the broker channel, right? Let us run a little bit, but but you, you have to hold us to a certain standard as well right. to protect the consumer, right? Not like we're going to do anything wrong, but we're running so hard, something could be missed. So there's, there's some guardrails for it. So compliance sucks, but I am glad that it's there, right? Yeah, for sure. Obviously we could go back and forth on this could be changed, this or that. And you know, you know, with a partner like AIM, maybe some things like that do help to free up the LO's mind to again, 
it goes back to the consumer, in my opinion, which I think you'll agree. If our mind's free, then it's going to be better for us to advise. Everything in life is better with moderation and balance. Mm -hmm. you know? And so if compliance has some balance in it, then it's going to serve a good purpose. Yeah. So cool. Everything from drinking wine to exercise, everything needs to have moderation. You know, mm -hmm. you can find that sweet spot. You're in good shape. Yeah. One of the guys in the, who, who taught me the business said, Hey man, mortgage is tough. He said, 40% of the time you're going to be so busy. You don't know what to do. 40% of the time you're going to be so bored out of your mind. You don't know what to do. And you know, there's a good sweet spot where, you know, like 10% of the time, you know, life is really become perfect. Yeah. Uh, that's, I'm going to remember that. And I, and I hope, I hope Ricky, I hope our producer back there got that because that's so true. Right. I mean, right now we're super busy and we're like, wow, run around with our head cut off. And then you got to get it while you can, because there could be that other 40% coming real soon. Who knows where you're bored, but when you can find that 10, 20% type spot, man, it's good. It's good. But guys like you and I, I mean, watching your content of being in the community and doing the lunches, I mean, that, that's huge. That's impressive. And that's, that's more important than money. And that branding will stick out so much that not everyone is going to start paying cash for houses. There's always going to be a need, whether it be um, cash out because homes are going up. Inflation is always going to be there, whether it be, unfortunately, a divorce or you know, a family, a bigger house. We're always going to have a need. And so guys like me and you that have that good branding can weather all that and look pretty recession proof, you know, versus some big built up establishment. So we're in good, we're in good shape, you know? Yeah. I say, as long as people keep making babies, we're in business, you know, cause <laughs> that's where everything really begins, man. Need the new house or it doesn't work out that the void, blah, 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 you know, you know, as long as people keep making babies, we'll be, we'll be good and caring about the client. That's cool, man. All right. So, it's still a little bit fresh in your mind, the transition over to the wholesale world. Um, if someone were, were to flip over today, just an LO, right? I went crazy, decided to start our own shop, the whole thing. But just as the LO side, what are some things to expect as you're transitioning or some things you might want to do to prepare yourself so you can jump off real hot where you don't want to break, like you don't take or I don't take. You want to <laughs> jump in really quick. What, what do you got there? I think partnering with the team is a good idea. I think finding someone in the community who has got it sort of set up and has got the approvals and the credit report and the systems and some sort of things in place, you can certainly jump in and do it from your own. But I do think um, uh, partnering and learning from someone, whether you join their firm or just kind of work with them in some sort of consultant phase or something, I think you should get some assistance. And I think, uh, that would help you out. And it depends on your business model. You know, my business model is very, I'm not all purchase like some guys. I'm not all refis where I pound leads. I mean, I feel like I'm pretty spread out that I literally, when I've met people and made commitments and helped them with their steps in life, that my business model is like 25% real estate agents, 25% financial advisors, 25% past clients, because I've closed a lot of loans over all these years. And then 25% friends and family, you know, friends and family should help you out and you should help them back out. This mm -hmm. is a, uh, the more you give in our industry, the more you will give back. It's human nature, you know? So just give as much as humanly possible. Anybody asks you for a charity, give double what they ask for, you know? That's cool. Yeah. Well, let's dive into that a bit. Um, so you're, you're pretty balanced, like you said, with referral sources, right? Where your business comes from. How is your business? Or, or would you say you're very regimented with your daily, uh, uh, your, is your day scheduled out? Is it pretty reactionary? You have to have a piece of being reactionary in this business, but are you making certain calls to, to real estate offices or your realtors? Are you checking in on them? Could you tell us a little bit about how you're staying in front of your, of your people? Yeah, my business model is pretty... Simple. For the most part, I just answer the phone. I'm very lucky that I don't have to market or I don't have to do things. So I really just, just kind of show up. I don't really have the next day planned out, um, but I wake up early. I go to bed early. My, my average day is kind of wake up at maybe 6 a.m. Um, start listening to Barry, 
You know, Barry's always going to give you some good talking points. Watch some Squawk Box and do a little bit of research so I stay on my game. Read some guidelines, tons of guideline changes hourly right now, and make sure that I'm an expert in my field. You know, And uh, I like that diversified approach because I like to connect other people to other people and have a nice little team of, cool. of people that are friends, you know, that there's trust. It's not some wide net, you know. I probably only work with six to eight real estate agents. They just happen to be the 80, 20 rule guys, you know, like yeah. in Denver, we close about 5,000 homes a month and we have 30,000 licensed agents. So you want to work with the good guys. You know? Some people are part-timers and some people are full-time good machines. Yeah. Yeah. You're so you're a lot like me where you're taking what comes at you, but you also spent the time building true relationships. So now you got this circle that just kind of recycles itself, right? For the most part. And I think that's easier work, you know, because you get a ton of warm referrals and you build trust and you always do what's better for everyone else. Whether you tell them not to do a transaction or I'm not trying to smoke and mirror some deal where I'm like, I want to take one year off your loan and we're going to do this. It's like, let's sit down and let's think about the future and, and how your stool has multiple legs on it. You know, your, everybody's life stool should have debt management. It should have tax planning and investments sort of risk tolerance. And getting a mortgage is not a linear piece of that. They all three blend together. And then think about where you're gonna be. Do you want to, is your goal in life to empire build and be in some, like I make a ton of money in the future? Or is my goal just to kind of have a simple life and check out at 59 and a half and have you know, a paid off house? And that goal is different for every single person. So I kind of help them sort of talk through and think bigger picture than just kind of what the mortgage gives, but then certainly give them options. Um, so my day is, it's not planned out. I just, I kind of, my inbox is very clean. There's probably less than 10 emails in there and there's lots of folders. And the only 10 things that are in my inbox are things that I need to follow up and, and have attention to. In old school, I got a pad of paper and a pen and my checklist gets things knocked off and written through the day. And I don't leave until everyone's called back and my checklist is pretty narrowed down. You know, some things move on to the next day. Um, during the day, I'm very like, I want to focus on one thing at a time. So I literally have one screen and um, I, uh, I think it's crazy to have, I go to some people's computer and they have like 30 tabs open. I never have more than like five tabs open at one time and just sit down and focus on one thing and concentrate because the more you get away from something else, the more you have to get back and be like, okay, where was I thinking? What's this? And then you just have overlap of being inefficient where you just sit down and pound one thing out and then move on to the next mm -hmm. and make sure you're planning that out. A mortgage is not that much time, right? It's probably what, four to 10 hours of work spread out over a period of time. And so try to slim that up as much as possible and you know, there's 200 hours or so in a month, depending on how many hours you work. And so you can, you know, you can do five to 10 loans in your sleep. I mean, that is really easy. Speaking of sleep every day, critical component, take a day nap, 20 minute day nap, middle of the day, huge. I like it. Yeah. I've, I've been really trying to uh, incorporate. Yeah. It could be a nap or some sort of meditation or just breathing, like just a reset. I think especially now with everything going on, everything's so fast paced. I keep saying technology's uh, evolved more than what, how we've evolved as human beings. Our brains aren't there yet. Mm -hmm. So you have to take the time to reset or you're going to get overwhelmed. And by the way, you'd probably gag right now. I got four screens. You know, <laughs> I have a bunch of, well, I close tabs down so I can focus on you right now. Um, but usually I have a lot going on, but I am working on that one thing, one mm -hmm. thing at a time, because I want to give the most I can. But um, you're successful, so everybody's different. Everybody's yeah. not going to have one model. Even your customer doesn't have one model. Like, how is their, what is their communication preference? What is their, what is their age and what do they like? And uh, some people just want to be rushed and get this over with. And that's okay. Like, my customers don't work for what benefits me. I work for them, you know? And then I try to just be as proactive as possible that literally my phone, besides new contacts, rings very, very infrequently. You know, um, I feel personally your goal is to 
give everybody advance notice of what's going on before it happens. If somebody calls me and is like, hey, what's going on with the appraisal? And then I personally failed because I should have told them, hey, this is the date that you guys going out to the property. This is when it's anticipated to be returned. I'm gonna give you a copy of this. And then you control your day and you're in charge. And they trust you and respect you more because you've taken the lead on that. You know, so that's, that's kind yeah. of my mind was just try to keep it clean like that. You know? Okay, cool. So uh, th that brings me to the next spot. I want to kind of break that down a bit more. So number one, how many units per year are you doing on average or how many per month? If you want to yeah. break that down. Last year was about 180, you know, cool. so that was about 15 a month. Nice. And, uh, it's just me, right? It's me and, and my wife's my processor. Okay. That's what I was going to ask. Okay. She's the brains. And our model just is, you know, I'll have these long detailed calls up front that's, that it do explain a lot. I think if you spend an hour up front, then you will spend less down the line. So I would rather not procrastinate and do as much as possible up front. And then, uh, so I take the app, I disclose, I lock the rates. I kind of run with all of that. And then I get the docs, kind of like you were saying, you know, the big chunk of them. And then uh, she submits the loan. She's much more detailed and, and, and uh, on point than me where she updates all the account numbers and starts ordering everything before it's been asked for. And uh, our average clear to close is 12.6 days. So just speed cures all problems. Just hurry up and get things done. Mm -hmm. and, um, I think having speed is a, is a, is way more important than money because you get a loan done. They're like, people are walking around the water cooler at work when you're allowed to work. And they're just like, yeah. uh, you should use my guy, man. He knocked it out. Like we were done like in 10 days, like this is crazy, you know? And so then that will spur off more referrals versus trying to send something somewhere for 35 days, you know, takes a little longer. But give the customers the option, you know, is lowest price important to you right now? Or is, is speed, is tech friendly? Like, you know, what's in it for you? And then sometimes they pick and decide. Yeah. So, I mean, what I get from you and knowing you is you're very efficient, right? So if we even go into more detail there, like how are you remembering each client's goals? You know, do you have a system for that? Is it something on the computer? Is it, handwritten notes like that's one thing I struggle with sometimes is just remembering everything I have a pretty good brain but eventually that can get overloaded right and as you're doing volume like I mean how do you remember the specific goals of clients because I'm an advisor as well like you are like you said you just got detailed in looking at long-term game plans and being a true advisor how are you remembering all this stuff what do you what are you using just that's some degenerate just memory I got I mean I use HomeBot um, okay. but I feel like I just I know people and you know my database is probably only you know 800 people or so so it's like there's not that much to remember um, I don't remember probably everything about everybody but I remember key components yeah, yeah, yeah. Like okay. when I do a loan application I'll do uh, you know ask them some specific questions like hey you left off years of school where'd you go to school how many years you got We'll be like, oh, I went to KU and, uh, you know, I got my, um, you know, bachelor's degree. That's something they're very excited about, you know, so, so compliment them, get excited. And then even better for your closing gift, it's very personal and they'll remember it. Send them a mat with the, you know, the Jayhawk on the front of it as their welcome mat to their house. It's very personalized. It's very cool. It's not very expensive. They'll think that kind of blows them away a little bit. So I really just kind of keep it all upstairs i mean it's just kind of weird it's like remembering sports stats i don't know why it sticks you know? yeah well it's yeah that, that's a good point i can remember like every stat from like the 90s as i get older i'm starting to forget them like and now my kids know it all but that that's a good point and, and it's like you said it's like you have 800 friends in your yeah. database right it's a lot to manage maybe not everyone can have the brain like dan over here but but uh that makes sense. When you're asking the right questions, things will stick in your own brain and then you're actually caring to the client, mm -hmm. which is what it's all about, right? Well, no, they can feel that. People are, they can they have intuitions. They know when you, when you care and they want to stay in touch with you. Everybody's phone number goes in the phone, of course. So if they call, they, you know, they get a welcome greeting and things like that. But it's just very, 
just intimate, you know, mm -hmm. that's, all, that's all I try to do. So how is the dynamic of working with your wife as well? Then, it, you know, it's business all the time almost, but it seems like it's something that you guys enjoy. There's obviously hiccups, but I've, I've seen this more and more where um, husband or wife comes into the business to help. So how is that dynamic? Everything has pros and cons, right? Well, oh, sure. Part, I wouldn't have it any other way, man. I love it. I think we, we work together. We have the same goal. We have the same work ethic. We probably try to, I mean, she's my best friend. We try to impress each other, you know? So I try to do good for her. And I think we don't want to let each other down, you know? So there's, there's, there's ties there. But, you know, the negative is, yeah, at dinner, you're talking about, you know, tax transcripts. Like, how would a yeah. boring life, you know? So, uh, I don't know. I, I like it. I, I would recommend it if, if your relationship's really strong. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, so not to jump onto my side, but we just <laughs> hired a, a new processor. I have, a, who's a friend of the family, which is mm -hmm. great. Um, my younger brother who's 10 years younger than me to the day, actually born on the same day, mm -hmm. um, 10 years, he's, he's starting to produce and he's like our production manager. And then it's been different now with this whole quarantine stuff with the kids at home. But my wife is also like our marketing director and she's probably the brains behind everything at some point. So, you know, selfishly I'm asking how that dynamic is because <laughs> It's going to happen in my world even more yeah. as we grow. So, yeah, that's that. That's really cool, man. Um, Is that your goal to build a legacy business and pass it on? That's that's really the only thing that drives me. Yeah. Um, yeah. As we're growing, the money's there. You want to, you know, buy buy a new house for yourself, you know, um, and you want to do that. But the legacy is pretty big for me. Nice. Um, that's how my whole family's been. They've been on the insurance side of things. And I was the first one to break away and do something else. So, you know, it's my turn to, to grow something and, and have the family involved and let them kind of take it at some point. So and what's cool about that is that's, that's your model and that's your drive and that's your passion. And, and so that's, that's, what's cool is that everyone can have a different model. In different mm -hmm. ways. I probably will not do a legacy business. You know, So my family doesn't go back very far. I mean, my, my grandparents came over on the boat, you know, mm -hmm. um, and so I've only, you know, I had my family's only been in this country two years. My grandfather was a dairyman real quick. My mom, obviously big inspiration in my life. She was commissioned sales at, uh, she sold phone systems. Like she married out and sold 50,000 phone systems or so dead business now, but she would go sell those extension things to companies. And really everybody just in my family just says, Hey, work hard, you know, and do what you want to do. So that's my blood is just, just work hard um at whatever you're gonna do i just happen to just fall into mortgage it's yeah. just for me just work ethic work 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 ethic wins on that on yeah that. and to bring back to our earlier conversation that's what is great about this industry is you can make it what you want to make it and yeah i mean they say like you said i mean you're a hard worker you could probably go do something else but what's better than the mortgage industry the type of money that you can make and you're literally helping people with right. their everyday lives, whether it's saving some money over here so they can go invest into, you know, whatever, life insurance for their kids or just to free up money to go on a vacation, cash out, buying a new home. It's really the best industry for hardworking people in right. life. But and that's what I tell people. When people say, Dan, what, what do you do? What, like, what makes you different? It's really not like – an F5 button trick. It's not this. It's literally just if you have the right, the mindset and the grit and the want, and you put everybody else first, and every day you do what you say you're gonna do, this business is very easy. You know, it's it's not something that it's not a get rich quick scheme. You got to put in your time. You and I have put in time, and so it might take you a couple years of doing less and less while you build your database. And then if you build your database the right way and you have a tool like broker has right now, um, it's, it's going to be easy. You know, mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot of people in this world and a lot of people need mortgages. Mm -hmm. And if you can do it this way and spend other people's money, like it's your own, I think life will go 
very far for you. Your career will be rewarding and successful. Mm -hmm. Let, let's talk when we got, we've went 30 minutes already. So we have about 10, 15, but I want to yeah. hit on, on mindset quick again, because I know that's big for you um, being in the right mindset. Cause this can be an overwhelming industry, right? And obviously you're in Colorado. You guys got all the psychedelics out there. <laughs> let's talk mindset. Dan. <laughs> um, let's say you're, you're an LO um, that is, maybe struggling a little bit right now just to stay on task and they're they're getting hit from all angles there's a lot of business coming in what would you what would you tell them right now to get back into that mindset i think i know what you're going to say but i want to hear what you have to say about it to get back into that balanced mindset well, that is a tough question because i'm I'm not good on how other people work which is why okay. i'm not good at managing and growth just as a personal thing for me so okay uh, I have a hard time looking at someone else and being like, why don't, why don't you do this? You know, sure. Like, Fair enough. But um, I, I'd say if, if I'm someone else, I have to try to sit down and be honest with myself. What are my flaws? You know, am I spinning my wheels? Am I afraid to tell somebody no? Like you need to come back in six months and we need to do this the right way. You know, am I afraid to tell someone you might not go for that high of a price or on the flip side, Hey man, you should spend a little bit more money. You know, like if your income is a hundred thousand a year, your house should be three to five times your income. So instead of not finding the right house and dragging your feet, let's spend the right amount of money. Let's invest the right amount in real estate and really help point the person in some direction. I mean, you have all this experience of buying properties of all this, you know, we've seen everybody's cards on the table for all these time and help them. Most people are savers or spenders, right? I mean, you're, you're kind of left or right and try to get them in that moderation zone. And real estate is something that people, usually when you're done talking with them, they're excited. I mean, there's a reason why they're thinking about it. There's a reason why they want to start building wealth. And I personally believe in real estate. You know, if it, if it has a need of, it's going to put something over your head, I think it's great. And so if I was somebody who was doing that, I would try to find out what my inefficiencies are really find out what my expertise is um, and be an expert, get some product knowledge. Don't have to say yes to everything. It's okay. Yeah. To say no, you know, it's a good point. The power of no is powerful. You know, I mean, there's plenty of times that I've said, no, it just doesn't make sense. We could do this, but I don't know if it makes sense. And you tell them no, and then you get two or three referrals from it somehow. And then you help them out, like you said, six months down the road to a year. I mean, you really have to trust the process, trust yourself. And really, I thought you were going to say what you have and what you brought up was getting back to focusing just one-on-one -on -one with the client, mm -hmm. hearing their needs and caring for them. So like if you're stuck right now, take what Dan was saying earlier, advise the client, in my opinion, and, and care for them because that's going to make you like your job again, like the industry again, when you're actually helping other people. And it's so, so much easier, right? If the customer doesn't feel like, oh man, I'm getting cold feet and I had to get dragged across this. You got them excited, trusted, and anxious up front that they know why they're doing this. They know what their goals are. And then they're energized to do it. You know, yeah. the real estate agent can guide them more efficiently versus driving around town. If the guy's not ready, you're not going to ruin a relationship by trying to slam them in the door, you know, you'd rather say, Hey, look, you weren't quite ready yet. And that's okay. Not everybody is a homeowner and not everyone should buy it every second. You know, every, I'm like the opposite of a sales guy. My approach is so yeah. soft that, you know, people feel like, are you telling like pushing me away? And then <laughs> human nature says, Hey, the more you push me away, the more I want to come back. Yeah. So, but like you're saying, you're, you have to have a kind of the balls to tell someone like, Hey, you're telling me this, let me guide you and try and push you to a spot that's good for you because it's, you can be very indecisive as a buyer or if you're refinancing, that's our job to be soft, let them make their own decisions, but kind of push them when they need to, to help them out. Nice. I think you agree with that, right? 100% for sure. Cool. All right. I got two questions for you. Then we're going to wrap this bad boy up. So hey, rapid fire, give it to me. So you've been in the industry 17 years, right? Yeah. Let's say you were 
brand new today okay. or you're kind of revamping your business, getting into the broker channel. You were stuck for a couple years and now you're ready to go. What's some advice you could give to someone that's looking to, to get going again? This is kind of my question earlier, but someone new, like where should they start? Yeah, I would, I would market your community. You know, I remember when I first started, I, I literally rolled up flyers and I would walk neighborhoods yeah, and I did that too. Big days with good weather while people were washing their cars and I'd go up and shake their hand and meet them, you know, and it took a lot of time up front where people mail mailers to your house, reach out to those people and go, Hey, you know, I'm in the community. We're here together. I know a lot of people let's work together and put everyone else's business first. How can I help your business grow? And then they will want to come back and return the favor. So I would, I would not put myself first. I would try a few different things and see what works for you. I'd probably buy some leads. I think buying some leads would be a good thing. If you could pre-approve some people and share those with real estate agents, um, that's much more better than, you know, paying desk rent somewhere. I think they're going to be like, wow, you helped my business grow. You know? mm -hmm. So I would think of reaching out and being as creative as possible right now. I mean, go find a, a heavy hitter real estate agent with a big database and ask them, Hey, are you calling your people? Like, do you want me to call them and tell them how rates are low and how maybe it's a good time to be a move up situation or just check in and refresh them? I'll do all the hard work for you. You know, it could lead to some refinance activity. It could just lead to, to clients. Um, you know, there's certain investors we work with, you know, print home value reports, put them in an envelope and mail it out to 200 homes and say, Hey, here's an estimate of what your home's worth. Uh, you know, check in, you know, so you could do mailers, you could do, I guess it's weird times because you can only do so much in the community. You know? Right. Maybe pass out hand sanitizer or something, you know? Hey, I mean, we got creative on our end. Uh, you know, my, my wife really led the, the, the little food drive we have doing going, right? Yeah, for sure. Throw some hand sanitizer out there, made some peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, put it in the local community, no strings attached. And I'm not sitting out there watching anyone. We put it out and it's going in about six or seven hours. And I think the people that are taking it truly need it right now. It's pretty cool, you know? Um, so yeah, to your point, getting out in your local community. We hear people talk all the time, find your niche and then grow it from there. So I would start with categorizing your leads. Like your A leads should be your friends and family and your friends and family wants you to succeed. So if you're not doing their transactions, they know three to five people where they would, you know, pass your name along because they want to help. Yep. And maybe you help their business out or maybe they just, you know, you just love each other and that's what family does. And then from there, I would start thinking of like some B and C situations of where I want to spend money and where I want to just do time and energy. And, um, you know, time out what kind of money and where you want to be and kind of have a plan, you know, and then hopefully you're starting to see some results from that. It's going to take time. You don't sure. just do something, turn it on and you're going to get a bunch of money. I mean, it's, it's going to take hard work and seed planning and you might have to give them a bunch of sandwiches until they start thinking through, okay, that's this. But if you keep staying in front of them, I think it will have value. I like, I like home bot too. I don't like, so much recipes or things. I like being known as the, like the money situation. Yeah. An expert on that. So. Yeah. I like home buy. It, it gives some true, true value. We've seen all the spam emails, this or that, that is a good, I mean, it, it goes out what once a month. Is very, that how yours is set? Very easy. It's very simple. It gets people's brain churning. They can it, update it. It remembers you. I, I, you know, when I also first started in the business, we used to mail people magazines. And the little label on the front said your name, right? And you just want to like implant into people's head how, how you're there and how important you are. And then it sticks. When you do a transaction, ask people three times, I want to be your guy and I want you to remember me and I want you to share my information. That's going to be valuable to me. So if you do it up front, you do it when you do the closing docs, everybody gets a full copy of the closing docs before closing and I go through it in detail with them. I typically attend closings in, in normal times. And then at the very end, hey man, how was it? Was it great? Did you love it? Are you excited? And ask for a referral again. If you've asked them three times, in most cases, they will return the favor. Yeah.
So let other people do the work for you. You just planted a free seed. That's one thing that even I miss a lot is just asking like, Hey, can you get my name out there? People want to help you, right? It seems very cliche where someone has in their email is what, what, what's the, what do you see? It's like, ask me the, the yeah. best thing you can do is to give me a referral or something. Yeah. It's cliche, but you got it. You should do that. People want to help you out. So don't be scared to do that, especially starting out hundred yeah. percent. All right, cool. Last question for you. Obviously we don't know where the world's going, where the industry is going, but what is your prediction? Where do you see this industry, real estate, mortgage, how, wherever you want to elaborate, in the next three to five years? Where do you see it? Hmm, the crystal ball question, huh? Yeah. Uh, lately I've been thinking just in a real short window and super high level, I think residential financing and just the residential market is gonna get stronger. I think home offices are gonna get bigger. I think um, there's gonna be sort of behavioral habits that change. And I kind of think commercial is gonna get crushed as just a personal weird decision. Um, and uh, I think actually in the end, we're gonna have more jobs because of how jobs are gonna morph out. You know, I think there's gonna be more rearranging of things that needs to be done and there's gonna be more glasses between buildings and all of that disinfecting situation that's gonna go on is gonna ultimately create more jobs. I don't know, I mean, that's, that's where I'm at. So. Um, every, all these people are going to need somewhere to live. And so real estate, I think, has a good um, steady head in the future. I think tech is going to come in and continue to make our jobs easier. And so you're going to have to do you know, less and less on commissions and more and more transactions, but it would be easier and easier, right? There's a guy that talks about that a lot. And I, I agree with that. I think that he's right with that, that uh, we're going to head in that direction. Real estate. I hope it doesn't turn too much into trading your car in, you know, like if you trade your car in, you go to the dealership and you're like, okay, take this thing off my hands. I'll leave meat on the bone, but it's easy. And people are lazy and they might take the easy way out of saying real estate could turn into some kind of bundle effect where you go, Hey, if you use this title company, you use this lender, you use these real estate agents, it's kind of all boxed in for you. I mean, that's slowly what some of these tech companies were doing you know, prior to this situation where maybe they cooled the jets a little bit. Mm -hmm. Kind of dumb. Now's the time to do it, not do it when it's raging upwards. Yeah, right. Um, but uh, I, I just see sort of minor tweaks here and there. I don't see some sort of um, revolutionary change one way or the other. I could see some of the older models dying out. I mean, the older models are set up with just just too much waste, you know? I mean, there's just, if you have seven managers and you have an expensive office and you have all these things that, just like retail in the world, man, retail is, is changing too. There's gonna to be more delivery drivers. There's gonna be more, more options online. There's gonna be more product online. Mortgage is gonna go into that same suit, you know? That I don't see people, doing it themselves because it's too big of a, a process. You're not going to be like, like e-trading your own mortgage. You won't no. be doing that yourself. So you will you'll still have a need for that. There'll be some sort of turbo tax situation, but you're still going to have CPAs and accountants that, you know, are the guys that provide value. Yeah. You don't want to be this ultra cheap, crappy product. You don't want to be ultra expensive with, you know, fancy Perrier or whatever you need in your office. Um, be the guy that has the value right in the middle, that you're priced right and that you're a stud and you're the mechanic that needs no advertising. People are like, go to this guy, man. He's the guy. Yep. You know, like you're a little secret weapon. I like that. Yeah. Like uh, the true advisor isn't going to go away. They, they, they need that. And like you said, hopefully technology or it will keep getting better to make our jobs easier so that we can give that back, give our time back to the client to truly advise. Them. I think that's where I don't even know where to start. Like, should I buy a house? I mean, you deal with them. Hey man, like, um, like, should I do this? And they're nervous. And a lot of our job is to instill confidence in them 
and go, hey man, you have a, you've been working here for two years, you have excellent credit, you've saved money for a down payment, this is the next good decision in your life. You're making a good decision, you know? And so first time home buyers, they're gonna be a sponge to that kind of information because they, they're getting smarter and smarter with all this transparency. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, move up buyers are trying to think through like, how do I make this work? What are the logistics? This can be complicated or it can be easy. And um, I think right now for real estate to, to do the like, uh, everyone's time and energy is different. So I think um, uh, helping them through that is something that they do in such a limited amount of time, every five to 10 years. And that the world changes so fast in that time that you need people to keep up with you. So I, I feel like we've got some pretty good job security for a pretty long period of time. Yeah. I'll agree with that. Well, there it is, man. Thank you. It was, it's always good to see you talk with you. Um, I hope this, this gets out there and resonates with everyone, which I know it will to all the, all the grinders out there, all the LOs, man, just trying to, uh, to do it their own way. That's what I get out of you. So I, I appreciate it, man. And, and hopefully I can get out to Colorado at some point and, and pick your brain and, and hang out. I'd love to do that. You're more than welcome. You can always come out. We got an extra room for you. And anybody else can reach out too. If you have a question in your, your whatever channel or you want information, our team of people all across the nation share information. And it's amazing, you know, that they take the time to do that. And they're so selfless and wanting to learn. You know, if you're, if you're, learning at every step from every person in different genres and different setups, then you're going to do better. Knowledge is power. Yeah. There you have it. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate it. All right, man. Take care. All right. You too. Later.